Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're looking at Graham Holdings. This was an interesting company for a reason I'm going to show you. What they are is, is a diversified education and media company made up of subsidiaries. Firm operations include educational service, television broadcasting, online print and local news, home health and hospice care, and manufacturing. The company's six segments are Kaplan International, Kaplan Higher Education, Kaplan Test Preparation. Okay. So what makes this stock, I, I, I'll just tell you right now. Um, I wouldn't buy this stock, but I'm going to look further into it because I have some questions. And that's why I'm doing this video on it because there's just some something weirdly interesting about this. But let's look at the negatives first. Okay, so you have a $3.2 billion market cap and with its free cash flow from this year, it's 12.6 million. You're nowhere near where you need to be for an expected market cap or to justify the the current market cap of 3.2 billion, but that changes when you use 150, and that's, if you use the five-year average, you get right around the market cap. You're slightly under it, but that's fine. I mean, when you're doing these, when you're looking at these numbers for like free cash flow using multiples of 10, 15, 20, you don't necessarily, just discount a stock because it's not quite where you want it to be with the multiples. You need to look further, but it, it's got a low PE 6.52 five years, 10.93 and it's earnings per share. Let's just go to the sheet. I don't know if there, Oh, there's one thing I wanted to show you about the cash flows. That's why I love their software because this is just in here. But if you look, it's been pretty consistent here. And then we have two off years. This one where it was negative 102 million. And then this one that is just 12.64 million. Now, I don't know why that is. It could be for a myriad of reasons. COVID, whatever. I, you would have to look further at it. So let's look at this company and see if we can come up with an intrinsic value or get somewhere around there. Graham Holdings, stock price $659. It has a $3.72 billion market cap and its earnings per share are $100. Now, we're gonna look at the five-year average of those EPS of that EPS, you could use three, but it just seemed a little bit. This doing it this way just adds a little bit more margin of safety because if you use the five year, it tends to be a little bit lower. And that's like I said, I'm a relatively conservative investor. That's why most of my money is in index funds. Warren Buffett's number one rule. Don't lose money. Rule number two, see rule one. So, all right, let's come down here. We already saw the free cash flow. I'm using the free, the 150 million free cash flow because obviously it's massively overvalued if you use the one year. But this is a company where I, if I was going to really consider it, I'd have to see what it's doing going forward and I would watch it. But you get a $610 stock down to a $457 stock. Now, this is the interesting thing. You have a current ratio of 1.67, but the interesting thing is the Ben Graham number is telling you that this is $1,348 this is a $1 stock. Guru Focus, which take that with a grain of salt, they're saying it's a $900 stock which I don't know what assumptions they're using. I could probably figure it out if I wanted to spend more time. But if you look at the shareholder equity, this is where it gets really interesting. 
divided by the shares outstanding and you get our book value, $803. I think when I looked it up online, it was $798. But we could be off on a share or two. That's why that would happen. If I add in the cash flows, this is an $1,161 stock. That's a really good upside on this. But let's go over and look at the cash flows. So in your juicy bull scenario, forgot to tell you what I'm assuming. I'm assuming a negative 1% growth up to a 7% growth because that's basically what they've done for the past 10 years is somewhere in that area. As I explain all the time, this is uh, a 10% discount rate. This is a 15% discount rate. I take these all and I average them together. If you thought it was going to revert to a 25 price to earnings ratio, this is a 1,600 and this is a $1,066 stock. And if we come down here on the low end, that's a $469 stock. And over here, using this method, this is just the average of the price to earnings ratios. You can see that right here. That would be the average of an 11, and then it's discounted back at a 10 and a 15% rate. So that average together would give us a $793 stock. Come over here using a terminal multiple of three, and it, it it's going to give me a $1,105 stock. And pretty much, this is trading below a 15% discount rate if you use this method. And if we come over here, that's an $845 stock. We look at this in the juicy bull scenario and 2032, it's trading at 2,774 and you discount that back at a 12.5% discount rate, you're getting an $854 stock. But let's go with a little bit more moderate, go with the mid-range assumption and see what that's telling us. So it's telling us this is a $600 stock and at that price, that's really not far off. So you wouldn't like, I'll be honest with you, if I've done my homework and this tells me it's a $606 stock, I'm not going to look at it and go, well, I'm not buying it because it's $659. I'm going to look further into this stock. I used everything money software. They have it between a $499 stock to a $1,679 with a multiple of earnings. And with a discounted cash flow, they have it as an $18 to a $549 stock. So what, what's the takeaway from this? Well, virtually everything that I have set up here is telling me that this is an undervalued stock. But I just don't know. I need to know more information about Kaplan. I've seen the commercials for it. I actually didn't even realize that till I read the, the uh, little synopsis down there on Everything Money software. But I mean, I've made relatively conservative, um, conservative assumptions on its growth rate and everything is telling me this is an undervalued stock, but I'm just not sure about it. And there's just something I don't like about it and I can't put my finger on it. This should, in all honesty, be a home run that I would run out and buy, but there's just something I'm not sure about. So I don't know if this helps you other than I would say the takeaway from this video is this. Just because you run the numbers and the numbers are telling you that it's a buy, you still need to do more research. There's still more to learn because I don't know. I just, I, I'm probably wrong on this, but whatever the sixth sense 
whatever the great beyond is, it's telling me that this is, I don't know. It's telling me I need to do more research because you're trading at a six price to earnings ratio. And I mean, even if it just reverts to the historic mean of the stock market, that's a $1,500 stock. So I don't know. I'll probably look at the 10K and do a video on that tomorrow night to back this video up. But this is just one of those things where I don't really understand the business model of Kaplan University. So even though it's telling me this is a buy, uh, just, I don't know. And that's why when I was running the numbers, I decided to do this video. Because I was like, uh, this really isn't in my circle of competence, even though everything is telling me this is a home run. So I don't know if this helped you, but I mean, I have an intrinsic value that this should be trading somewhere around $845 to $1,000. And for, uh, in a range, I mean, I could go on the lowest range of this, but you know, it's gonna be below where it's trading. But with the Ben Graham number and coming down here and just looking at its book value per share, I need to know more. So before I would buy this. So I'll go ahead and do more research. I hope this helped. Or, you know, I don't know because this was kind of a con confusing video and this was kind of a confusing stock for me. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and I'm out.